I'm Selin Kiasm and this is the Great British Chef's Signature Series. Going to Westminster King's Bay College is very much about learning the, the classical French techniques and it's in a huge contrast to like, you know, the cooking of my mother or my grandmother, for example. Being able to be influenced by those two things allows me to create the food that I create now. So I spent really my cooking career as a young chef with Peter Gordon. He is the one who taught not just me, but everyone who passed through those kitchens to cook fearlessly, you know, and don't let anyone tell you that it shouldn't go together. I'm Selin Kiasm, we're here in Shoreditch at my restaurant Oklava and today we're going to be cooking cardamom glazed beets, grilled mackerel and a verju apple dressing. First stage that we're going to be uh, doing is our, I call it a vegetable glaze because you can glaze all sorts of vegetables with this. I've done uh, carrots, celeriac, pumpkin, you name it. So I've just got some water, some demerara sugar going in, a bit of butter. Ooh. Get that in there. We've got some cardamom that I've just kind of split and also a couple of star anise in there as well. But you could just use the cardamom, that's fine. I'm going to pop that on the stove. We're going to bring that up to the boil and reduce it by um, around a third before we put in our beetroot. And I have two different colours here. Uh, these are little baby beetroots. You can also use the bigger ones. So we've got the golden beets and also these lovely red beets. And these are from a farm down in Cornwall. We have here our vegetable glaze, which has just been bubbling up for a couple of minutes, uh, just to kind of emulsify it all together. And because I'm cooking two different coloured beetroots, and therefore I'm going to get two different uh, colours, I'm just going to divide it up into two. And at this point, all you're really looking is for it to sort of bubble up and melt the sugar, because as it all reduces down and the beetroots cook inside, and because of the sugar and the water and the butter in there, they're all going to emulsify together and then create a really luscious kind of uh, glaze around the beets. So we're gonna pop that back on the stove and just let it gently cook. My new uh, cookbook is called Three. Um, it's about using, uh, for me, the three essential foundations um, of what it takes to make a good plate of food, which are acid, texture and contrast. And it's just really about trying to get people cooking at home and giving them the confidence to be able to sort of open up the fridge on a Wednesday night and open up the cupboards and say, oh, well, you know, I read this and this and about how I can create this plate of food. For example, there's a green chili jam recipe in there. If you're making that and you're gonna make a bit of a batch of it, you're not just gonna use it on the one thing, it's like use it then as a great condiment in your fridge to have and use it with loads of different things. So these are beetroot here. Uh, you can see they've got nice and glossy, uh, beautiful yellow color on them. So they're kind of almost done. And now what I'm gonna do is add this verju, so our raw grape juice and kind of use it like a, a vinegar basically because of all the sugar in there you want to contrast that with some acidity. So the verju is going to work really well for that. So a little splash, that's our golden beets. And then these are our red beets, again, looking nice and glossy. Uh, so we're going to add a little bit into there as well. Cook those beets for another five minutes or so, just so that verju really emulsifies into the sauce. And we've got our lovely mackerel here. So uh, all we've done here is filleted it. You can ask your fishmonger to do this. And then we've done what's called a the bone, uh, this is what you tend to do with mackerel rather than trying to pull out all the bones and then dried it, really, really dried it. And I'm going to be uh, cooking this over uh, our charcoal grill, which is probably my favourite piece of kit in this kitchen. I just love the, the smoky vibes that you get from cooking over charcoal. So drying out the, the skin of the fish is going to mean, um, especially when you're cooking over charcoal, that you are able to get crispy skin. If the fish is wet and you're trying to get a crispy skin on it, then water and oil just don't mix, right? The whole point of that is building that caramelization. And so the drier that you can get the skin of your fish, then the more likely you are to achieve that. I'm just going to put a tiny bit of olive oil over the skin, a little bit of mold and salt, and we're going to cook this on the grill. So it's important that your grill bars are really nice and hot so the fish doesn't stick basically. Because you're looking to really cook this fish very quickly, you want them to be as hot as possible. This, uh, this grill is really great because you can lift it up and have a little look at what's going on. I can see that it's really nicely um, caramelised underneath. So I'm just going to uh, let the fish just chill out for a second. I've got a fish here, just been leaving it to just chill out a little bit. Just flip it over and then you should have your nice caramelised kind of mark on there. 
Yes, we got here a lovely uh, kohlrabi, very big one actually. I really love this, it's something that actually reminds me of home quite a lot as well. We just uh, love to eat it as kind of a part of a, a spread of like lots of meze with like crudités and it's really delicious and moorish and great with drinks. So I'm just gonna uh, peel the outside of it and then you can see here where the kind of there's a watermark that runs around. So we're looking to peel away that uh, green from there. If you can't get hold of kohlrabi, you know, it's kind of a weird one, kohlrabi. It's sort of a cross between an apple turnip kind of thing. Um, I guess you could do some like thin slices of turnip or something. If you've got any sort of, you know, good green grocer or Turkish or Middle Eastern supermarket near you, then they're, they're bound to have it. So I always think that coriander is probably my favorite herb. And I love, I love its leaves, but I also love its stems. And I think this is, uh, it's nice to be able to use both. You could just, of course, shred the whole lot up. But here I've just picked the leaves off because I'm gonna mix them into my little salad with the kohlrabi and the apple. With the stems, I'm just gonna um, just slice these up. There's so much flavor in them and they're like really juicy. Um, so I always think it's a, it's a shame to throw away the stems of coriander. Got lovely apples here. You can go with any sort really here actually. Like a, you know, a Granny Smith is actually going to be great because that tartness is not going to be a bad thing with the fattiness of the, of the mackerel. Something like a Braeburn or whatever is also going to be good. So we're just going to make almost like a little salad here really with the apple. Our diced kohlrabi picked coriander leaves and then we also have our little stems that we chopped up we have our beetroot here and there's going to be really awesome colors going on here so let your imagination run wild and kind of plate this up however you like very much the principles are, are kind of in, in the book. It's really great to treat vegetables in this way and kind of give people different ways of treating vegetables rather than just roasting or just boiling or whatever. You could take these vegetables and then pop them on the grill if you're lighting the grill anyway and then put a nice char on the outside and then drop them back into the glaze. Um, I think that's really delicious and adds a ni nice little smoky layer to everything as well. To the little salad here, i am also just got some different coloured chicory, you could use different salad leaves as well. There is definitely a real freedom to my recipes. I kind of want people to just go, oh, let's put a bit of that in there, let's put a bit of that in there. And I really believe that if you follow the principles of what I'm talking about in the book and, and attempt some of the recipes, I think you'll start to understand like what it is that I'm talking about and actually just how a chef thinks but does it kind of naturally because you've been cooking like that for so many years in a restaurant environment, but it's also, you can just apply that to everyday food. We're gonna plate up some of this salad. This would be really great actually, even just if you didn't want to even cook the mackerel, you could buy some lovely smoked mackerel or something and just kind of flake it through and have it as a salad in itself. So it can be as simple as you want really. And then we'll just finish off with our fillet of mackerel, tiny bit of mold and salt there. It's nice to have that little pop finish off. And there we are, that's my cardamom glazed beets with grilled mackerel um, and verjus apple dressing. Mm.